Bitcoin just keeps on going. It is on fire recently. We've seen some pretty decent growth and breakouts for Bitcoin. And in today's video, I'm going to be going through the technical analysis. Let's roll that intro and get right down into it. Okay, guys, welcome back to another Bitcoin video update. Welcome back to the Cheeky Crypto channel. This is Bitcoin paired up with USDT. We're on the four hour Binance chart. And yeah, it's been a very interesting few days, right? We were last uh, really kind of discussing this chart on a Sunday where we were talking about the potential for a breakout of our mid level uh, ascending wedge line here. And this breakout has been very, very good. As I was kind of talking about in that video, that if we were to see us kind of rally and get a close above this position, and we're going to want to kind of go long and we're going to be targeting out that kind of 53 to $54,000. And if we were in that position right there, you would see significant amounts of profit being made so far, compounded with leverage, of course. Now, if I was to be trading this, of course, I'm going to be trading on the BitGet platform. The link for that is in the description down below. If you haven't yet signed up to BitGet, what are you waiting for? You are missing a trick. Check it out. The link is in the description. Like I say, it's my go-to platform. I find it very easy and self-intuitive to use. And we don't have those problems that I've had with other exchanges with Wix just liquidating you out of absolutely nowhere. Um, it's actually very, very consistent, very, very good. And I haven't had any issues whilst trading on BitGet. So why not check it out? Now, in terms of our trade or charts here, uh, we can see that we're still progressing upwards towards our target range. We are targeting out that upper trend line here uh, of this ascending wedge. Now, the ascending wedge pattern is a bearish pattern. OK, it's really hard to kind of get bullish about something here. Uh, as it is having higher highs and tilting into or co uh, compressing into this point up here. The ascending wedge is bearish, but during the ascending wedge and the process of this bearish pattern, we can take into consideration the fantastic rallies that are also unfolding. And this is putting Bitcoin in some pretty nice positions. Now, obviously, the rally to the upside here is being compounded by the Bitcoin spot ETFs. As people are buying shares in the ETF, uh, they, that ETF is being forced to buy Bitcoin. OK, it's not being driven from an institutional lay level players buying up Bitcoin just because, you know, it's on a run. It is being bought by the um, by the ETF, right? The ETF has to buy you know, Bitcoin to uh, to allow those shares to be bought, right? So as we see shares in the Bitcoin ETF being purchased, that means more buying pressure for uh, BTC for the ETF pr process, right? And of course, like everything, and I talk about this way too much. Um, but if, you, if you're if you in Discord, I apologize because you're, you're going to know exactly what I'm going to say. Um, but essentially, you know, if uh, if Bitcoin's being bought, then someone is selling Bitcoin, right? It, it balances out supply, demand. Um, and so with everything that is going on here, we, we do have to really bear in mind that, you know, it's not just buy, 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 right? Uh, there are people selling their Bitcoin in order to facilitate the moves uh, to the upside. Now, the imbalance part here is that there's not enough people selling to service the amount of buying pressure from the ETFs. But it's good to see uh, within the on-chain metrics that retail investors at the kind of more vulnerable levels are taking profits. They're the ones selling the Bitcoin to the ETF. And at some point, the people who are buying the shares in the ETF, because let's face it, the only reason that they're buying shares in the ETF is to make profit, will eventually drop their shares and start selling their shares. That's going to be an immense amount of selling pressure. So at the moment, we're seeing all this buying pressure from the Bitcoin spot ETF, right? That's going to reverse on us at some point. Now, that's a little harder to be predictive about because we don't really have the data to back that up, right? This is something completely new that we've not seen in the charts before. So it's interesting that we have this ascending wedge pattern, right? This ascending wedge pattern at the moment, we can see some great uh, you know, accumulation happening by the ETF. We're probably going to see some profits getting taken to test that low trend line. Then we're going to probably see some more rallies to the upside where everyone feels that it's all going really well. And at some point, when we coil up inside this little apex here, we're going to get rejected. And that rejection is probably when the Bitcoin spot ETF uh, starts selling off. Now, let's think about when and why that might happen. And um, this is a really important one because we've been talking a lot about 
the Federal Reserve pivot. Now, the problem with the Federal Reserve pivot is it is an incredibly bullish thing. Ultimately, lowering interest rates allows larger investors or the more uh, understanding or savvy investors, the people who understand how markets work, will know that lowering interest rates basically means that they can start investing in high risk assets like cryptocurrencies. Whilst interest rates are high, the appetite for high risk assets is low. Okay, so a Federal Reserve pivot is incredibly bullish because when the, res uh, the rates start dropping, the interest in high risk assets like Bitcoin goes up. But here's the problem. When the Federal Reserve do in fact lower their interest rates, they do it when the market is at its worst, as in when liquidity is completely dried up. And most recently, with all of these runs to the upside that we've seen, what have we seen with the CPI data? Well, it's come in higher than expected. This means that we're not likely to see a Federal Reserve pivot or lowering of the interest rates until that CPI data is back under control. Now, I had my hopes and my dreams kind of pinned March being the kind of month that we see a Federal Reserve lowering their interest rates. Now that's probably going to be June, July. And that's not the end of the world. It's still very good, but it is going to basically allow for some of the markets to continue running the way that they have done. Now, in the case of Bitcoin, we've seen some pretty decent growth. We're close to all-time high, I guess, to a point when we're still a fair chunk away, but we're getting closer to it. But altcoins and many altcoins, they're, they, they're still struggling. They haven't seen the same level of growth. There are a couple of outsiders to that. Obviously, we see Solana's running quite well, and we see a few others, but for the most part, the majority, they're kind of lagging behind. And this is because there hasn't been a lot of money coming into the market, right? Money going into Bitcoin through ETF isn't really coming back into the market. It's not going to come into Bitcoin, out of Bitcoin, into altcoins. It's going into the Bitcoin spot ETF and it'll come out of the Bitcoin spot ETF. It won't come out of uh, the bank into the crypto market because those investors were never on the cryptocurrency exchanges. They just wanted the ETF to make profit. So it's important that we understand that this is a bearish pattern. But during that, we can still appreciate the fact that it's going to take some time to play out because the Federal Reserve are unlikely to pivot and cause a, a crash in the stock market. And that crash in the stock market, guys, it will affect the Bitcoin spot ETF. OK, and that will be one of those big catalysts that we start to see Bitcoin really starting to get affected negatively. Now, this is not the case of the higher it goes, the harder it falls. I do not believe that is going to be what unfolds here. So I do think we still have the potential to be reaching those higher limits, possibly right up into this apex of 58K. It's possible. Um, I won't rule it out. But I am very mindful that the bullish times are on a bit of a, a, a ticking time bomb, essentially. They they will eventually go off and it will eventually see a Federal Reserve pivot because that, in my opinion, is an inevitability. The Federal Reserve will need to print money. And in order to do that, they will need to lower interest rates. So interest rates are an inevitability that they will get reduced. That Federal Reserve pivot will happen, but it won't happen until um, basically the Fed are satisfied that inflation is under control. Um, now, of course, I, I will cheekily say that the Federal Reserve or the US are just changing the basket of assets <laughs> to basically tell you what the CPI data is, right? If if you don't put in the things that people actually need and buy, then of course, the inflation is under control, right? So we saw the manipulation uh, with how you terminal uh, the terminology around recessions over in the US, you know, kind of moving the goalposts a little bit. And we also saw um, how they were changing uh, how to measure inflation uh, last year as well, uh, looking at it over a shorter period of time rather than a longer period of time. And of course, you know, what you put into that basket of assets, right, let's not not put in food, let's not put in fuel, and all of a sudden, you know, inflation's under control. So, uh, you know, it's important that we understand, you know, that anyone can make any number do anything they want by manipulating the underlying data that sits inside it, right? Um, it's important that we can understand that. But for this, it's a bearish pattern. We have been seeing some great put to the upside. Um, and yeah, I think we're still going to enjoy this a bit longer because I do not see a Federal Reserve pivot happening as early as I would have liked it to happen. But again, this has been a common theme when it comes to Bitcoin and the Federal Reserve not doing what they should do, in my opinion. And they kind of dropped the ball quite heavily uh, back in 2023, uh, where it should have done a 0.5, they did a 0.25. And really that, that, that less aggressive 
uh, dovish approach has, has basically completely balls uh, up uh, quite a few things. Now, it could have been deliberate, of course, um, but we have seen some great uh, pushes here uh, as a result of that. So, uh, Bitcoin continues to kind of run, uh, but I do ex expect that when the Federal Reserve pivot, uh, you're going to see, and maybe it will be March, you know, that does tie in nicely with this apex. Um, when the Fed Reserve pivot, the stock market historically crashes 50%. And because a Bitcoin spot ETF is on the stock market, that's what I think is going to happen. Um, and so, yeah, until then, I think we can enjoy a really healthy green market. Um, but when that Federal Reserve pivots, uh, we're going to see uh, an absolute train wreck uh, uh, occur. Now, before I finish this video off, I want to talk about this uh, on our daily time frame. Uh, coming over here. Okay. A lot of people are really bullish on the market right now. And, um, you know, it's interesting, right? They, they they talk about how, you know, there's not many kind of corrections, you know, we don't see, see terribly too much. I want to kind of point out that these kind of 31%, 26%, these were happening on the way up in 2021, right? We can see these, this fantastic run right here, all the way to the upside, right? And we can see a 31% correction, a move up, a 26% correction, right? And these are pretty common. You you can see them all the time. Uh, here's another 18%, for example, right? And then, of course, we have this drop over here, right? This drop takes us down 55.58%. Okay, this happens to be uh, April through to June, and then we have to rally up for the all-time high just up here. Okay, so one of the things I want to point out is we can have these runs to the upside, okay, these little mini corrections, and then a Federal Reserve pivot do this, all before we have that big run to the blast off top, right? This is the, the level of things that can happen, even in the most bullish of markets, something like this can happen. Okay, this was driven from, um, I believe, the Coinbase IPO. We also saw during this crash, Luna, uh, Celsius, all of those problems right there, right? Um, and so things break, uh, even in the most bullish of times, things break break. And when they break, they break bad, right? And then, of course, you can retaliate, uh, you retaliate, you go back up, recover, um, and hit all-time highs, right? So the reason I talk about this is you can also see over this side uh, on the run from the Bitcoin bottom in 2018, great run to the upside, healthy correction, run up, something broke, the pandemic, COVID, right? And we saw a very drop, big drop in correction to the downside right in here, 63%. Okay, the most bullish of times, up, up, up and up. We can't possibly go down. This is just a dip, buy the dip, not a problem. Look, we're recovering. We're going to the moon. Fantastic. Bam, something broke and a 63% correction. Okay, something broke, 55.58% correction before we rally up again. Here we are. We've had this fantastic run to the upside, most bullish of times. We've had little mini corrections on this journey to the upside. We're right up into this area of expectation that I've had for a very long time, around $52,000, right? You can see it right here, not redrawn this. This will continue to go and it will be continue to do well until something breaks. And could we see another 50% correction to the downside? These are all things that we need to be very mindful of as we kind of get into these really bullish times for Bitcoin. And uh, I want to kind of just put it out there. I haven't really changed my tune on where I sit with this. I'm just articulating it differently to help as many people as I possibly can. So you can let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And if you're interested in Solana, why not check out this video right here where I go through the TA for Seoul.